Hey everybody, thank you for clicking on the video. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. So what's up for today? Today we're going to build something that everybody needs. And for those that are new to the channel, uh, what I do is I take an article from a magazine, electronics magazine, and then I build it from scratch, exactly like the author wrote in the magazine, and I bring it to life. So doesn't everybody want a CB frequency counter? I mean, come on, we all need one of those. Well, that's what we're going to build today. So this comes from the Radio Electronics uh, magazine, September 1977. I think the 70s were the height of CB radios. Pretty sure, because when I'm looking at some of the magazines back in the 70s, they were a lot of CB related stuff in there. In any event, what it does is it... Uh, it shows you the frequency that you're transmitting on. Now, it won't do it on the receive end, um, but when you transmit, the circuit will display the frequency, like 27.125 for channel 14. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it works. Um, and what I'm showing you right now is actually a picture of the author's version of it. Um, looks like a metal enclosure. I've, I've got a plastic one maybe I could use. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, and as you can see, there's lots of chippies, but we'll get into that in a minute. So the very first section of the build will be the power supply. So this unit could be mobile or it could be home-based. So obviously I'm not going to put a CB radio in my car, but uh, uh, that means I'm going to have to build the power supply. And that's what I'm showing you right now. So pretty simple power supply. It shouldn't be that bad. Now that is not, um... Uh, in the original design. So there is no uh, printed circuit board for it. I will build that power supply on a perf board. Um, and the next part is the good stuff, right? Is the actual schematic. And as you can see, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of chippies on this thing. I did have to buy some of them. I had some of the TTL logic, but I didn't have them all. And I did have to buy the LED displays. And there's a transistor on here, too, that I had to buy. It's very special. It's Q1 at the very top. So I am putting some money into this project, unfortunately. And uh, But say, Livy, that's the way it's going to go. Anyway, if it brings entertainment to you, that's worth the cost. And who knows? I can maybe use this thing for my ham radio. I don't know if you know, but I am a ham radio operator. So um, apparently this thing supposedly can do anywhere from... Um, I guess the, the 160 band, uh, which is the 1.8 megahertz kind of thing, all the way up to 30. We'll, we'll see. It, it's definitely designed for CB, so we'll just focus on that. But then we'll try it on the ham radio a little bit later. All right, so the next part of the, the process is the board, right? So I'm showing you that now. Uh, and as you can see, lots and lots of chips in there. And um, it's a pretty good version, actually. So what I did is I cleaned it up. Well, I'm in the process of cleaning it up. I did cut it from the magazine and I started cleaning up the big board, at least for now. And I'll do the other board. So the other board is where the display uh, digits will be. And that'll be on a right angle to the, to the board, uh, to the main board. And uh, yeah, so that's that. Anyway, so let's uh, get on with the build. I'll start with the power supply and um, I'll bring it back in at that point. Okay, so before I build the power supply, I just wanted to show you the parts that I have. Now, this isn't all of them. Um, I ordered some ICs, like I said. So those are to come soon enough. I ordered them from DigiKey, so they should be here pretty quick. In any event, uh, I am going to build the power supply on this perf board here. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. And I have um, a transformer. And in fact, if you watched my... Uh, organ scrap out the last couple of videos ago that's where I got that transformer so the circuit uh, the power supply requires 15 volts so this one puts out 17 it's multi-tapped but um, I'll use the red black which is 17 volts AC and I think that should do okay um, and one other note these capacitors here if you ever see these uh, mica capacitors. They're usually low uh, capacitance, but I have seen some, you know, 0.1 microfarad or whatever, but those are like gold. 
if you have them, like I've got a bag. In fact, I'm going to take them out here. So I don't know if you can see that, but those are the uh, really, really hard. Um, and they come usually from older equipment, uh, especially the high end equipment. Um, but if you ever get those, keep those because if you were to buy just one of these little capacitors, you're probably going to pay about $10. So anyway, just a tip. Anyway, let's get on with the power supply and I'll get back to you. Okay. As you can see, I've got the board done. So there's our power supply right there. And I got a big chunk of aluminum that I found. We'll, we'll let that run when I hook it up, when I get everything done, that is. I'll hook it up and see how hot that gets. Um, I'll probably extend it out uh, to the case, that transistor, and put the put a heat sink on at that point. Anyway, uh, 11 and a half volts, close enough. That's all I need. And I've got a big transformer on there. And we're ready to go. So the next part of the video, I'm going to make the board. So I've got to clean up the traces on the board and then print it out and then, you know, Put it through the uh, laminator, tone of transfer, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we'll get back to you shortly. Okay, so I got the uh, traces or the actual design uh, edited. Uh, I scaled them and all the rest of it. So they look pretty good. Lots of chips on that one. And that's going to be our display board right there. Anyway, I've cut out the uh, fiberglass copper clad boards, as you can see, and just about to put them through the laminator. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm putting the board through the laminator. Uh, once I'm done this, I'll bring you back in. I'll get the paper off and I'll we'll take a look at the traces just to make sure they worked out good. I know I got some tight, tight traces on some of these boards. So it'll be interesting to see how that looks. Anyway, I'll bring you back in shortly. Okay, so the toner transfer is done. And as you can see, I've got the two boards. Uh, not too bad. Unfortunately, there are some some breaks on the traces. They are very fine traces, but the, the problem is, is when I use the paper, I use a Staples glossy paper. Um, after the toner transfer method, you put it in water just like this. And you, you would think the paper would just float off. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It actually is very, very adhesive. So I have to rub uh, the whole board with my fingernail. Oh, not the fingernail. Actually, the, 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 the finger itself, the thumb, just the skin part, just to get all the paper off. And by doing that, sometimes you take some of the traces off. Anyway, let's put it in the etching tank and see what it looks like. Okay, so I got the boards etched. They're not the greatest, I got to be honest with you. They're a little bit airy. And I should have known that because when I printed it out, the actual toner transfer from the printer, it the black really wasn't that black. Like it was kind of blackish. Anyway, lesson learned. Next time I'll make sure that the contrast is is really high, and I'll get a better uh, better board. However, there are some open traces on the boards, but nothing that can't be fixed easily. So I'm going to go ahead with the boards. And, uh, yeah, just go ahead and drill them. As you can see, I got the drill press right here. So let me get the boards drilled and I bring it back in. Okay, so I am making good progress with this project. I have to pause it right now. I have to work on another project, but I am still waiting for one special transistor. And I hope it comes here by Friday because today is Wednesday. Uh, because Canada Post, I think, is maybe going on strike. So anyway, um, I'll put this on pause and I'll come back to it when I get that part and we'll continue with the project. Okay, so I got the digit display board connected to the main board, as you can see. And there's the main board there. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I'm not done yet, obviously. Um, but I've got these transistors that I have to put in. And they're an unusual case style. It's almost like a TO3 case, but it's not. It's much smaller. Um, and I hope I got the right transistors. Now, the parts say... 2N4063 
and the number one is right after that. So two and four zero six three one. I can't find any data on that particular transistor number. So I presume it's a two and four zero six three. And that's what I bought. So these are the ones here. I bought them off eBay. Uh, they're old kind of thing, new old stock. So I'm hoping they work. In fact, I hope the whole circuit works, quite frankly. And anyway, I have to make a some sort of a connector or uh, I guess maybe heat sink. I'm going to use this piece of copper that I have and I'll just drill three holes. At least I'll try and dr drill three holes he uh, on the copper plate and then put an insulator on it. And maybe that might do anyway, it's making progress and I'll bring you back in when I get some more. Okay. So it's another day and this is where I am. So i pretty sure I'm ready to go and power this up and see if it works. First, what I'll do is I'll apply the power to it and just make sure I got the voltages correct on the actual chips, the blank, uh, well, the sockets and see if everything's kosher there. And if it is, then, um, I'll put the chips in and we'll give it a, give it a go. Right. Just an update. I did change the power supply. I didn't like the pass through transistor with a Zener diode in there. So I decided to just go with a regular 12 volt regulator. I think that's going to be much better. And I did have to beef up some of the traces here. I realized that's where the main uh, 12 volts was coming in. And this thing does kind of take a lot of current. I've got a lot of TTL logic in here and that trace there just wasn't cutting it. Uh, the boards you get from China, they're, they're not, the, the thickness of the copper isn't, isn't very much, quite frankly. So, um, anyway, I, I had to beef up some of the traces, so I think everything should be okay, but let's find out and plug it in. Okay, so I am back and hey, we got some good news. Usually when I build a project, there's always something that goes wrong and I have to troubleshoot and all the rest of it. Now, there is still something, a, a small problem, and I'll, I'll show you here in one second. In fact, let me just demonstrate what I've got so far. All right, so right now I'm on channel 14, and it's reading 27.142. That should be 27.125. So there is an adjustment or something that needs to be changed or fixed. Um... There is a variable capacitor at the back. I tried adjusting that a couple, uh, you know, forward, backwards, whatever. Nothing changed. So I got to look into that section a little bit more and see if I can find uh, where I can fine tune it. Maybe it's a component itself or maybe it's at a variable capacitor. Maybe that's the problem in itself. So let me uh, check in, uh, look into that and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, so I am back, and guess what? I've got the actual frequency counter working, which is fantastic. Now, I did spend uh, a, a bit of time, in fact, a lot of time, trying to troubleshoot, but that's the beauty of, of building these projects, right? Because if they don't work, and usually they there's something wrong, like maybe with the design, who knows? In any event, um, I love to learn after I've got to build and it doesn't work. So I, then I troubleshoot and figure out what's going on. So I learned a lot from this um, project. A couple of things, uh, just looking at the schematic. Yes, this is very, very intense with TTL logic. Now you got to remember this was 1977, right? So that maybe was the latest and greatest. I know it's 2025, so we're talking a long time ago. But let me tell you, this thing draws a lot of current, about a half an amp of 12 volts. So I know the chips are 5 volts. There's a there's a Zener diode in there, but at the uh, 12 volt power supply, half an amp, which is incredible. In any event, I did have some problems at the very bottom. You can see the oscillator. Well, the 10 megahertz crystal that I had wasn't exactly 10 megahertz. So I had to look for another one. Luckily, just luckily, I had a 10 megahertz crystal still in my parts bin. So I put that in. It was much better. And also the very, or that to permanent capacitor there um, in parallel with the variable capacitor, I had to take that out. That was the only way I could get 10 megahertz exactly. So uh, with that said, um, there were some other issues too with some traces that I had, um, you know, just little things. In any event, I've got it to work. So let me uh, demonstrate. 
turn the power on here. All right, so just to, to let you know, this is a, a CB radio. It goes to um, the actual frequency counter, and then the output of the frequency counter then goes into uh, a 10 meter antenna, 11 meter antenna. I actually have one, believe it or not. So let me just uh, key down and I'll show you what's going on. In fact, well, I'll just go right there. Okay, so right now I'm transmitting on channel one and the frequency for that is 26.965. So let me go to channel 40. Oh, that's two. And there's 40, 27,405. And good old channel 14. 27.125. Uh, there is one little switch here that just kind of turns off the LED display, just, uh, I guess, save, I guess, a little bit on the power. And when you key down, it comes on and away you go. So there you go. So that's the project. All done. So if you've come this far, thank you for watching, by the way. I really appreciate it. And, uh, oh, one more point. I'm going to end the video here only because this project takes a lot of real estate in a case. So you can see I've got a big transformer there. I've got a power supply board there. And I've got the actual frequency counter in itself. I don't even have a case that's that big. Yes, I could buy one, but that's probably going to be like about $55. And I don't think I want to spend that much money on it. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is. It's working. Everything's great. I love it. And I've learned a lot, like I've mentioned to you many times before. I'm not an engineer. I'm a technician at the very most. Um, but I like to learn uh, as I go along. And also I'm here to entertain too, right? So anyway, hope you appreciate it. And um, I'll be off on vacation next week. So I probably won't, well, I definitely won't have a video for next weekend. And uh, if you haven't checked out some of my other videos, check them out and uh, bye for now.